Stannis Baratheon has never done anything wrong, nor will he do anything wrong. Anyone that says differently is just trying to cope with the fact that he's the one true king and most likely the Zora High. And before you guys comment about, yeah, little Shireen, right, Stannis' daughter, what he did to her, we know it sounds bad and it looks bad on the surface, but trust us, there's actually a really good reason why he did it. And after you listen to us talk about it, you're going to understand it's completely excusable and actually the best thing he could have done. Yeah, I want to go in order of his controversial, you know, killings or things that he did within the book in the series. And the first one we see is, you know, the killing of Renly, right? And if, if you're Stannis in the situation... Why wouldn't you just kill Renly? He's being a pain in the ass little brother, not bending the knee to Stannis, who's the rightful heir. What gives Renly the right to think that he sits in on the throne just because, what, he's not bald or something? Like, I, I, I really don't understand. He's like, oh, oh, Stannis, you're cold-hearted and you don't have a colored Kingsguard like me. I, I really don't get any appeal towards Renly at all, people siding with him over Stannis. Because, like, if you look at Stannis, it's like law and order. Like, cool, let's get things done. You know, do your duty do what's right, and crime will get punished. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm pro-Stannis. Dude, absolutely pro-Stannis. Renly is the affirmative action hire for for the kingship, right? I mean, there's, he doesn't offer anything that Stannis doesn't. I, maybe he's more, like, personable on a, like, really, really surface, like, superficial level, right? He gets along with everybody. Mm -hmm. He's a nice, suave guy. Who cares? Who cares about that? What has he done to prove that he'd be a good leader? He's being annoying. Like you said, dude, it's completely ignoring the rules of succession. Like, Robert died. He established this amazing dynasty, now the new Baratheon dynasty, Everybody loved Robert. He was a great king. Well, he was an okay king, but everybody did love yeah. him. And he created an era of peace in Westeros. It's like, yeah, if he goes, Ned knew it. Ned knew it was right. John Aaron probably would have said the exact same thing. Stannis is the guy to take Robert's place. Renly wants to usurp that. I'm not even sure his reasoning behind it is just like, it's like, no, I think I'm going to do a better job than my. It's why. What, what's what's his reasoning? There's no reasoning yeah, at all. What? He does. I mean, he has a lot of people to back him too. That's the annoying part right. too. So many people actually back his ass. Again, is this just because they don't like Stannis' behavior or the bald thing? I don't think the bald... Listen, if I saw a bald guy and a, and a guy with hair and both are chads, I'm going to pick the bald guy to be the king every <laughs> single time. Every single well, time. His, his, his head's basically yeah, formed to you know, have the crown sit there, right, by removing the hair. I was, that's exactly what I was going to say. And then when you take the crown off, enhanced. you're going to see the imprint of the crown on your head. Everybody's going to know, like, oh, dude. A crown belongs on this guy's head. Look, when he takes it off, there's a little divot where it would perfectly fit. Mm -hmm. He was like, he was born for this role. And the whole reason why people back Renly is because he's the Lord of Storms and, or, you know, the Storm Lands. And the only reason why he's put there is because Stannis is in Dragonstone, which was, the, the Lord of Dragonstone is the heir to Iron Throne. And I know there's like this whole kind of like timeline yes. thing where, you know, technically that should be Joffrey at this point because he's now the, the new heir uh, in Robert's eyes. So, you know, Stannis should go back to Storm's End and the Stormlands. But the only reason why the Tyrells kind of side with Renly is because Renly is single at this point. We know why he's single. But Stannis isn't single. Stannis is married and has a kid. And that's the reason why he's not really open to any sort of, you know, marriage alliances that could you know give him a stronger claim to the Iron Throne. So that's the only reason why Renly is getting so much backing, I think, by so many is because, one, well, he's Lord of Stormlands. And then also he has the ability to be married off to a higher lord, which is the Tyrells, right? Which gives him this huge I, I, I mean, I guess I guess that's a good point. So, yeah, people are probably sucking up to him, hoping that they'll pick their daughters or whatever. Right. Yeah, I, that's a good point. That's a good point. But, okay, knowing all this from Stannis' point of view, it's like, you're my little brother. I love you. But I've given you so many chances, so many chances. Like, I'm going to have my extremely powerful high priestess do something to kill you. I'm going to do it. And, by the way, though, we're saying this as if Stannis really pulled the trigger himself. Mm -hmm. Stannis did not pull the trigger himself, and he doesn't even think that he really did it. He kind of, like, he, he knows and he thinks that, okay, yeah, this is probably the red woman that did yeah. this, but it's not like he went there and pulled the trigger himself. You know, I don't know if that makes him a coward in somebody's eyes. I don't think so. I think it makes him brother who had to reluctantly kill his own right, brother. Right. right, and then Renly should know that Stannis will do anything to get what he wants. Like, he was there in St or you know at Storm's End during Robert's Rebellion when Mace Tyrell was putting a siege on the, the stronghold there, or the castle, whatever you want to call it, and they were eating cats and dogs within Storm's End. So he saw the determination by Stannis, like, hey, listen, we'll sit here for a year if we have to. We'll eat the cats and dogs. We'll even start eating... Some of the dead people, if we have to, but we're not giving this place up. He should know that, you know, Stannis is going to do whatever it takes to get things done or get what he wants. And also, Stannis has the better track record when it comes to the military leaders, like one of the best commanders. What has Renly done? Like, is there any sort of cool feats of Renly? And even if there are, 
who cares? They're not, they're nowhere it. near as good as Stannis. Stannis has like no, he had like not a huge military or excuse me, uh, naval background. He's like one of the few people that have been able to defeat the Iron Fleet from you know the Greyjoys. Oh, dude, I know he's a giga chad. Like him defeating that fleet was the only reason that that area opened up and allowed for you know the army to actually mm-hmm. come in there and win against the Iron, which is amazing. Like, I, yeah, his feats his feats are not talked about enough. So, don't you think that would skew some of these people though? away from Renly? To, what does he have yeah, to offer? Is it just like maybe a... Is it maybe just like a... I guess he's the same bloodline, so maybe he has the potential to do this. And the fact he's the youngest son, he just didn't get the opportunity. I guess maybe I could see that argument, but it seems kind of weak. And also, what I was going to say about this too, the, the eating the cats and dogs thing. I, personally, if I was locked in a castle or if siege or whatever, I'll eat a cat, I'll eat a dog. I have no problem. In the world. I'll eat people without even a second thought. Without a second uh-huh. thought, it's like if I'm gonna, if it's between death, my own death, or eating a person, I'm going to eat a human being. I'm gonna eat a human being, and I'm gonna love it too. I'm gonna cook it in a way that's gonna taste mm-hmm. good, and I'm gonna enjoy it. And the fact that Renly would definitely not want to do that, it's not just that he couldn't man up and do this this task. It's that he can't even rise up to what I would assume is just a completely logical conclusion. Most people should read. Let us know in the comments if you would rather die or eat a human being. Because if if you would rather die, I mean, come on. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, that, that is ridiculous. Come on. It's just, you got this one shot here on life. Self-preservation. Yeah. You know, no one says you have to do it to your loved ones. You have to eat your loved ones. You know, it's just like. No, absolutely not. But if your loved ones die, you know, like, you know, your liver regenerates every five months. Like, it's totally new cells mm-hmm. every five months. Wouldn't it mean so much to your, like, dead parent, <laughs> maybe, if, like, they're a part of you now inside your liver for the next five months? It's like, oh Yeah, I don't want, I don't know right? if I want to think too much about it. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, I, I think, uh, I think I would want someone to, lay, if, if someone, if I died and someone close to me was, it's either you eat me or you die, I would rather them just eat me. Like, I would just give them full permission. So, just Honor the body that the seven gave you. Honor the mother. Also, some of the Renly supporters that fight with Stannis on the Battle of Blackwater, they're surprised or thrown off whenever they see some mysterious figure in Renly's armor. And they think it's Renly's ghost come back. I, I'm kind of sus on all of these people that are supporting Stannis now and Renly. I don't know if they're part of the Stormlands or what, you know where they kind of break down uh, their full allegiance lies. But if they think that a ghost came back just because they see somebody in Renly's armor fighting on the battlefield, even cutting some of their own men, they think, oh, that's our Lord Renly. I'm going to return back to him and, and fight with him against, you know, the Stannis' people. Uh, some of those people... I don't know. I, that makes me super frustrated with some like, of the Feel, feel like free this. to leave. Feel free to leave, honestly. If you, if you think that, yeah, p- please do go back. How stupid can you be? I'd be embarrassed to pet people in my military like that. The Lord of Light, like half of Stannis' army believes in the Lord of Light at this point, correct? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's the Queen's men. Yeah. They're, they're the ones that are the ones supporting the Lord of Light, and the King's men, the people you know from Stannis' side, are kind of like, uh, I don't know, reluctantly accepting it. But they're not like full supporters, like the yeah, yeah, right, right, right. No, no, I, I totally understand. Yeah, they accept it. They just don't like it or whatever because they think it's uh, just. I think there's a lot of people in Westeros that think that all of the gods are real and like only the seven is like the one like a uh, true like noble god that you are to worship, right? I'm pretty sure right. that's kind of how it goes. The Septons probably uh, think that too. But I say this. I've said this before in a previous video. I'm not a big fan of the Lord of Light or any of these gods that like show their powers overtly like this because I think it's kind of bitch behavior from the gods you know if like if you're really a truly powerful god you don't need to show anything it's like the faith is what matters i'm orchestrating all events here it's like come on but in this situation if you are like uh, fighting a holy war like this and there's a present threat right in front of you and this god that you support who has your back is showing you these powers or whatever i don't know how you could think then that's like Friendly's ghost, that concept. Like, what God is backing them? What God is backing them that, make it, that yeah. makes this happen? I don't think any, right? You have the support of the ultimate being behind you in your frame of mind. What's this? The, these people all worship the seven, the God who actually does nothing ever. So is this really... It's kind of suspicious. Uh, listen, I'm a big supporter of the Seven more than the, the Lord of Light, and I think it's kind of so am I. Kind of a cringe thing that your uh, that your God has to show you signs for you to believe. It's like your parents, yes. like, oh, I have to give you toys for you to think that I love you. It's like, don't don't you see how much I love you from these other aspects? But people that dog Stannis for, you know, join the Lord of Light. It's like. I mean, it's almost like he's sitting like a David Blaine or some sort of like huge magician uh, that somehow keeps guessing correctly everything that's in his head. You know, like front row is like, you're thinking of an elephant or like a red balloon. He's like, how the fuck is this guy doing this? Like, he has to have some powers. <laughs> right. Like, what the hell's going on here? Dude, he gets three leeches 
he sac- and then uh, Melisandre sa- oh, sacrifices yeah. them, and then three kings just die out of nowhere. Like something's up, right? Like through that process, what you're talking about? Yeah, when he it's uh, Rob Stark, it's Joffrey, and who's the third one? I can't remember. Balon, Balon, um, Balon Greyjoy, yeah, Balon Greyjoy. Off Greyjoy. the cliff, right? He took a little tumble. So all three of them die in succession, and st- each one of these, like Stannis, isn't fully convinced. When just Balon and Rob die, like he really right. has to be convinced, you know. I, I and I like that a lot. It's very pragmatic, right? It's like it could be a coincidence, right? Like two's a coincidence, three's a pattern, whatever. And then, yeah, when when Joffrey ends up dying, that's when he's fully convinced. And I I like that about him. I think that's good. And guess what? I'd be convinced too at that point. If some lady comes to me and says, "Hey, see these three leeches? This one represents Balon. This one represents Rob. This one represents Joffrey." I'm throwing them into the fire. They're gonna die real soon. It's like, dude, are you serious? Three kings are gonna die. Like the three heads of these fighting forces, two of which don't even actively fight in the militaries. Like I, I'll believe right. it when I see it, bitch. You know. And then it comes true. It's like I am so sorry for everything I said. I believe I'm Azura High, and I have Lightbringer. That's it's a real sword. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and well, he's not like sacrificing innocent people, right? Like he burns some traitors to get favorable winds when eventually he decides, like, hey, he's gonna go move up north uh, from Dragonstone. So it's not like he's taking just innocent people and sacrificing them. But he has a good quote about, like, sacrifices. Like, they're supposed to be hard. They're not supposed to be, like, easy things to do. You don't sacrifice easy things. Like, uh, like for Lent, you know, Catholics will do, like, oh, I- I'm going to stop doing something I really enjoy to show my appreciation. It's not like, oh, I'm going to stop uh, going to the gym, you know, or <laughs> I'm going to stop eating vegetables, so something easy or something, you know, like, okay. Yeah, I'm sure that's uh, such a hard sacrifice for you to do. Yeah, the show, I think, does a disservice to Stannis in this way with the sacrifices because they kind of make him seem like a psychopath who's, like, foaming at the mouth, you know? It's, like, power-hungry beyond belief, just will sacrifice anything and everything, you know, to to get what he wants. And to an extent, I guess that is true, but when the mission is holy enough in real life even, it's like, is some of these things, it's like, is there anybody that wouldn't be worth sacrificing? And, you know, for the greater good... Of uh, we'll go into that a little yeah. bit more later, but I, I think I, in general, I think I think the disservice that is done to Stannis in the show is that they make him seem a little bit more. I don't even want to say ruthless because it's not ruthless. It's almost like it's almost like stupidly violent, right? It's like stupidly power hungry. I don't know. Well, they also make him look like a simp to Melisandre, which I don't like. I don't like. I they think do, Dan yeah. and Dave are not a big fan of uh, Stannis Baratheon. They also don't give him his cool Lightbringer sword. His sword is supposed to be like just kind of glows red. It's not a flaming sword. Um, he gets like a flaming sword. Or it's like red, I guess, in like the first episode. Wait, when he, when he pulls it two. out, I think when yeah. he pulls it out of the actual <laughs> thing, it's supposed to be actually a flaming sword. And then, yeah, in the books, this thing is red. It's green sometimes. It's like a bright white, and it actually does glow. So, I mean, symbolically, dude, I think it could be life Lightbringer. Because I'm not sure if Azura High, you know, come back to life in the prophecy. Do you really think that anybody believes they're actually going to have the exact same forged sword of Azura High? Like, this thing could be anywhere. Yeah. Or, or like but represent if, anything. Like, is he actually gonna have to kill a lion and his his love of his life, whatever, uh, for Zora? Yeah, Hyde, yeah. You know, to, put into to, his chest. Well, I and right, I agree. And wouldn't it even be? I feel like more. Listen, if there's one prophesized flaming, burning, uh, shining sword that represents Azura High, and this thing really existed at some point way in the past, or maybe it even didn't even exist, right? Maybe it's just a prophecy in general, and then somebody appears with an unrelated but glowing sword and you're in this position of power and you proclaim yourself to be, you know, whatever, and you're actually you're positioned in a spot to where you could save Westeros or at least take over Westeros and protect it from something that isn't even a threat at this time, whatever you want to say, that almost convinces me more that it's Azura High. Because what are the chances that there would be another glowing sword? You know what I mean? Right. If it's mm-hmm. just a glowing sword, it's very symbolic. And plus, if you have the religious figures of the Rolar at your back too, like supporting this item you have and like what that might represent to your status as Azura High, that's pretty damn convincing to me, dude. I don't know. I think Stannis is, yeah. Well, Stannis is great about all of this, but he also says, like, I don't want this, really. And he, he constantly is saying this, and, you know, some people are like, he actually does really want it. Aren't you reading, like, the subtext, how he really wants it? It's like, no, but he understands if he lets this down, if he allows these people to take the throne and he does not seize his birthright and the, the precedence that is set for how many hundreds of years within Westeros, all that starts com- comes crumbling down. All the precedents and, and laws he believed in, all of the order now is just wiped away because he doesn't want to insert his claim. Like, he has to assert his claim. He has to do this. Otherwise, you know, it's just, there's no laws. It's just political wills. 
you know, like who who will will themselves to power, and that's what Renly tried to do, right? I'm just gonna do my right by conquest, not my right by uh, my name that everyone kind of agreed upon. So I don't know, it, it'll just destabilize the realm if he just allows things like this to happen. Well, I agree, and to be fair, you know, Robert did the same thing. He just conquested his way into power, but right. uh, that goes into the nuances of like was this morally correct or not or whatever versus Renly, who's just like, well, no, you know what? I think I want to do it. It's like no, right, that's not yes. Right. Yeah, but I to- yeah, I totally agree. And it, yeah, eventually you have to like there has to be so much like disfavorable feelings towards the king for you to get enough people to side with you to actually make a successful rebellion. So yeah, there's a lot of like factors in it that would result in an overthrowing of the Targaryens or the the ruling class. So, but you know, the killing of Courtney Penrose uh, that that happens shortly after same Clash of Kings. They don't put it in the show, but first, well, first off, I just want to say this: Courtney Penrose. On sub, if you have a girl's name, it's your first name. Courtney. Unbelievable. Like, Courtney, <laughs> Leslie, Taylor. I know Taylor's like, a, you know, a whatever. Could go think, either way. Still on sub. Still on what, sub. What do you think about Lauren? Lauren? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We have a friend named Lauren. And oh, but see, this is the, we're kind of biased, though, right? Because in, when, we, when we grew up in high school, how many Laurens did we have that were men and women? Two. I think we had well, like there's three two. and three. I thought there was well actually yeah there's two I know for sure but yeah we thought it was like a normal thing turns out we were just freaks or these two <laughs> were just freaks our high school yeah. is literally a circus everybody laughs at us now anyway, well anyways this Courtney Penny Rose open up your gates Stannis is the Lord of Storms of the Stormlands and of Storm's End you are now his you know servant like what it just feels like every person is like dragging their feet and supporting Stannis and it's very frustrating because Stannis is like dude this is the rules we all agreed on these rules and now everyone wants to break the rules as soon as I benefit for it like it'd be very frustrating it's almost like uh i understand why stannis eventually wants to get into practicing or at least going to the lord of light because if this is gonna give me what i want no one else is gonna give it to me because i rightfully deserve this this should be going my way but yeah no one wants to give it to him and and the whole thing with edric storm he wants him to prove that that joffrey and you know the other kids from cersei are really jamie's and not Roberts. That's why he wants him. He doesn't want him to like right, sacrifice yeah, and right just, away. just like, chill out. Right. For anybody that doesn't know, for anybody that doesn't know, Edric Storm is the bastard, like the first legitimate bastard of, or recognized bastard, I should say, of Robert Baratheon. Okay. Mm. And so, and he was sent to live at Storm's End just to kind of get him away from the capital because it was seen as disrespectful to have the bastard present there or whatever. And so, yeah, this guy being alive at Storm's End is the proof, or at least it's a. I don't know, it's Westeros proof, right? Like, hey, look at the hair colors. That matches and this doesn't. Therefore, right. you know, it's incest, right? That's just, that's the checkmate, apparently, right? That's the smoking gun in Westeros. But, uh, so that's what it is. And Robert, or Stannis is trying to get this guy from uh, Cor- Storm's End. And Courtney Penrose, too. But, but Courtney, Courtney says no. Courtney says no because why? For some, like, he thinks Stannis is going to kill him, I guess. I don't even know. I'm not convinced fully that that's even the reason. Right. But Well, so Stannis is nothing wrong by using another demon baby to take him out, too, right? I'm going to... Oh, yeah, no way. It, totally justified, it, man. He sends in SEAL Team Seaworth, you know, under covert ops, going underneath Storm's End to birth this baby. It's like the same scene we get in the actual show with Davos and Melisandre. But, yeah, if, if you have the choice to actually do this demon baby thing, you, Ty wouldn't be Tywin would be doing this. For sure, using demon babies if you had the chance to do this. Oh, dude, it, absolutely. You save so much logistical hassle and potential lives lost for uh, individuals. So the Courtney Penrose killing and also the Renly killing, I, I don't see how anyone can justify other than people saying, it's Kinslain. Well, what do we call Renly? He's he's a, uh, wouldn't be a usurper. I guess he's a usurper. Right? I, I, no, he is, but I guarantee you he'd be willing to actually slay Stannis on the battlefield, where Stannis like did this little sneaky way, you know what I mean? Like you, could, you again, you could call that treacherous or like bitch behavior or whatever you want to say. But come on, dude, you can't even prove that he killed him. Right? Prove it. Like prove it, bitch. <laughs> he didn't do it. He didn't do it. And I completely agree with what you said when it comes to like Tywin and these guys being willing to use shadows as well. If they're yeah. put in the same situation and they have the same holy mission, I would even say that the Tywin would be willing to use these shadows like uh, in less savory ways, like for more purely power and like a self-serving purpose. Right, yep. I bet you, at least that that's kind of my first thought. Same with the figure like Roose Bolton. Same with maybe even the Blackfish. Like these people that we respect as these chads, right? Like obviously Ned Stark wouldn't do it or whatever, these like annoying people who are way too tied to honor. Right, yeah. But I think, you know, you're... Your typical Giga Chad in Westeros definitely would. But, but that's why it's interesting with Stannis is because you know his inclination would not be to use these demon babies or whatever, this uh, this dark magic, in order to get what he wants. 
but it's interesting because he's almost like a he's almost like a Ned who's not nearly as uh, warm. He's like a more cold Ned that believes in law and order and chilly. Uh, yeah, chilly Ned that plays by the books. He's not a political animal, but then for Stannis now he has a choice. Like, okay, do I just do the right thing? Or use a demon baby to do what I want. And it's just like the, I think uh, George R. R. Martin is uh, quoted with saying like, the best character is like the, the human heart in conflict with itself. So that's perfectly describes what Stannis is doing. And then we have that even bigger example later on with Shireen. But uh, one other killing we get in the books is almost killing of Mance Raider. He really doesn't kill Mance Raider in the books. It's uh, someone in disguise. They use the little, uh, what, what's the thing I remember called? who it is, but it's, it's a fake Mance Yeah, so it's like someone, uh, Melisandre used like a little spell to change it, so it looks like it's Mance Raider. Anyways, but yeah, but guess what? Justifiable. Why did he do it it's again? It's justifiable. It is. Yeah. This guy's a fucking traitor. He's a traitor of the Night's Watch. Like the, uh, Even the most honorable guy we know, the most stupidly honorable guy we know, Ned Stark, used to cut these babies' heads off Left and right, right? He just snapped these heads off. He didn't give a shit. He made all his kids watch. Right. Like, watch this, kids. This is a good, wholesome thing to do. It's like, holy shit, Dad. I know. This is like, reminds me of the HR meme, right? Or, or not the HR meme, but the lady in the office. Oh, yeah. Where we I see the <laughs> Ned killing yeah, yeah, someone, yeah. the person that, uh, you know, uh, what, what is it? The person that. No, no, re- reverse, reverse it. Right? <clears throat> it's like, it's Stannis killing him, and it's like, OMG, HR, please. And then it's. Well, immense. I know. I, well, yeah. Ned, it's, it's like, yeah. Yeah, Ned Ned comes in and is like, uh, whoever gives the sentence should swing the sword. And like, oh my goodness, you're so honorable and right. And then Stannis comes and goes, yeah, he's a traitor and deserves a traitor's death. Oh, excuse me, HR. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's an unfair treatment for my boy. Come on. There is a good love for Stannis, and you know, we'd love to hear more of the love for Stannis. Like, what would you really love about Stannis more than any other character out there? Because there is a big love of Stannis fandom out there. But there's some people that, for some reason, don't look at him the same as... Like potentially Ned Stark, and Ned Stark is so beloved, and uh, Stannis is. I was. I also kind of feel like though that this like Stannis love. I think a lot of the time it's just on pure like rebellion, right? Because a mm-hmm. lot of people don't like Stannis. So it's like, oh come on, I like Stannis. I think everything you do is cool. It's like no, no, no. Not only do you should you think he's cool or whatever. Like I know he does some bad things, but I think I think he's pretty cool. No, no, no. Every single thing that he does is great <laughs> yes. and amazing and perfect. And there's nothing he can do wrong. He's my god king. <laughs> That's the reality. This, this drip. He has a like cool flame crown and oh. light bringer. Like, how are you not running it back? Oh, and he's, he's Mr. Eamon. He's, he's at the boy. wall. <laughs> he is. Mr. Eamon at the wall. What's one notable thing that happens between Mr. Eamon and Stannis? Mr. Eamon's like, can I please see your sword? It's so cool. <laughs> Shows him the sword. And then he's so jealous because he's an old man who never had a sword this cool. He whispers in Sam's ear. He's like, hey, hey Sam, <laughs> trust me. That's not the real life bringer. No way it is. <laughs> He's yes. crying inside because he knows this is probably the real life bringer. And even if it's not, it's the coolest fucking sword he's ever seen. Just coping. He has to cope. Just like so many other people in this fandom have to cope about it. Um, and, and so then we get to finally, you know, in the books, he almost tries to uh, kill or kill, sacrifice Edric Storm. And then it's the same thing with Gendry in the show. And let's just wrap this with the Shireen thing, right? So he sacrifices sure. Shireen. To get like favorable weather in the books, he doesn't do this. He says like, "Hey, pray harder." Uh, I don't care. Uh, we like half of our people are unbelievers. We're not going to start just sacrificing people to get favorable weather, which is pretty based, right? Yeah, but super based. If you're in Stance's position, right, and you see all these acts of God in front of you, and then you believe there's a threat coming across the wall that's going to doom all of mankind, and all you have to do yes. is sacrifice one life. You're telling me you're not going to sacrifice that life, even if it's your own kid? Uh, p- people, in the ch- I, people, comment down below. Please tell me. You would not sacrifice your own kid if your God told you the only way to save all of mankind, the world, is to sacrifice one person. Yeah, and you know what? It's one thing, again, it's a pragmatic dude, right? It's it's So if you're looking at it like biblically, right, it would be honorable, like the story of Abraham, right, if you're willing to sacrifice your own kid for a God that hasn't even proven anything to you, right, that hasn't even offered you any concrete proof. Like, that's a noble thing to do, whatever, blah, blah. But in, like, a real pragmatic world, you wouldn't just do that, which is kind of how they portray it in the show kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost just, like, a random, like, primitive... Like a flip of the coin. Like, oh, maybe this will work. Well, it's a flip of the coin, but it's, it's like, okay, I don't want to hear that from Mr. I play flip the coin the game on my (laughs) cell phone. But, real story. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, he's, he's like a random tribal from like uh, the Amazon rainforest that are sacrificing virgins to get better weather. Like that's that's BS. He didn't do that. The Lord of Light has shown himself to be real. And he went to the wall and he saw the threats beyond the wall. At least enough people counting this stuff to be like, okay, 
I'm using my brain here. I'm not just going to discount it all as uh, myth, as superstition, like a lot of people do. This is real stuff to the point where he even started mining dragon glass, right? He started yeah. mining dragon glass on Dragonstone to create weapons to fight the White Walkers with. Like that's He really believes that this threat is here. He's not just killing people for fun. And I think, by the way, if the person that you sacrifice is your own beloved, super cute, you raised her, you, you, know, you held her on your knee or whatever, daughter— I think that actually makes you a better person than if you sacrificed a stranger because that it's that much harder for you to make that sacrifice. Like he's not a psychopath, he's not some emotionless dude. It was actually difficult for him to do. And I think that makes him even more honorable. Everybody should really they should be on their hands and knees praising this man. And and how many of these other, you know, husbands, sons, brothers are going to have to die in this war to get stance on the throne or even save, you know, save us from the long night anyways, right? So people are going to die anyways and and for right. us to think that we're going to value one life over another just because it's his daughter and if anything this is like a more compelling reason why you should say he should be the king overall because he's willing to sacrifice literally everything to do what's best for the realm and there's a great quote by stannis when he's talking about davos which another reason why uh stannis is the best he's the best hand davos by far is the oh, best dude. hand in the realm he has the best hand with the best hand. <laughs> yeah, he also is a very equal opportunist uh, employer, right? Like, this guy's a smuggler. He's able to, like, rise the ranks or rise in the ranks of his council by just giving him sound advice and just being, like, great at his job versus, like, oh, no, you're not a lord or a, a highborn person. You can't be here. Oh, oh, I put my nose up at you, like so many other people are uh, within the right. series. But, you no, know, he has this great quote when he's talking about Davos's, you know, uh, guidance to him. I think, I don't know if he's talking to John or what, but uh, Stan says he was trying to win. He said, I was trying to win the throne to save the kingdom when I should have been trying to save the kingdom to win the throne. You're like, oh, dude. And now he's doing that, right? He's going now yeah, it's to, amazing. to save the kingdom to win the throne. And I don't know how you don't back Stannis. I don't know how you could justify. I, I love to hear a good justification. People are like, well, there's still a chance. It's like Avengers Infinity War is a great movie. But the worst plot point about it all is like, we don't trade lives for Vision. No, it's like, dude, kill Vision. Kill Vision. Range. You have to kill him. Because otherwise, you, you run the risk that you're not able to take out Thanos in time and into half the population or whatever, you know, whatever threat. They didn't know he was going to take out half the population or whatever. But, dude, if you kill Shireen and you save everyone from the long night, you're saying that's not heroic? You're saying that's stupid? Let us know in the comments right now. And be honest. Be honest. Would you kill your child? And this goes double, by the way, for anybody <laughs> who actually has kids that are comments. Yeah. We really want you to comment. <laughs> and and with you, your, if you have your full name on your YouTube profile. Uh, yeah, too. full name and address. Just honestly. Picture. Post a screenshot of Google Earth, yeah, yeah, of your address. But would you burn your own child alive to save the lives of everybody on Earth from, like, an undead army? And if the answer is no, I don't know. <laughs> you're beyond You're beyond help. How could you not? How could yeah. you not? It would really suck. But even your kid, I think, would, you could really, you, I think you could make your kid understand in a way. It, depending on how old your kid is, I guess. But even if they don't, they're screaming and crying. They know exactly what you're doing to them, like. You know, sucks to suck, but that kid's got to die. And it's not that you're a bad person, maybe. You can maybe say you're not a bad person, but maybe you shouldn't be king. And that's why Stan should be king. It's like he's willing to make that sacrifice. Totally agree. And so it's so weird that when the show did this post, uh, you know, when he's in the North, I guess I should say, when he's in the North and he's preparing to fight the Boltons and stuff like that, it's such a stark contrast from the books because in the books, like you said, that amazing quote, it summarizes what his characters like perfectly. He only gets wiser, right? He only gets wiser. He makes the realization of what he needs to do. And yeah, maybe he becomes a little more zealoty or whatever, but it's not like it's without reason. It's like, dude, there's every like, tangible justification to right. back what he's talking about versus in the show where it just kind of seems like he falls off the deep end and he's just like, oh, Ugh. it doesn't seem like he's very concerned about the, yeah. the state of the realm. It's just he gets more power hungry. It's the total shallowing of the character. And this video is not to say that, like, though the show sucks, the books are good. That's not what this is at all. It's purely Stannis. And I like Stannis the show, too, by the way. I'd, I'd still back Stannis the show over well, pretty much everybody. He's he's way better in the books than he is in the show because they also just kind of right, sum yeah. up his ending too. They just want to quickly kill him off so that way they can get to Jon Snow to head down south because right now we still have Stannis is alive and he's getting uh, troops from around the north to you know um, yeah I think he was going to attack the Dreadfort but now I don't know if he's going to go to Winterfell but he's you know he's marching through even uh, Asha Greyjoy is like acknowledging and seeing like the power and the determination of this man and you know when he's up there in Winterfell Stannis has some of the best <laughs> some of his best quotes are up there like one of them is when he learns that Gillies is Craster's daughter you know it's like a born of incest and he's like her own father got this child on her 
Well, <laughs> we are well rid of her then. I will not suffer such abominations here. This is not King's Landing. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Based. <laughs> get this shit out of here. Incest, cringe. Yeah. Get out of here. No. Dude, sorry, Sam. Sorry, Samwell. Yeah. And he, well, he also explains it in another quote, like his sacrifice thing. He's like, I, I have a duty. If I must sacrifice one child to the flames to save a million from the dark, sacrifice. It's never easy, Davos, or it's not true sacrifice. It's like, dude, oh, yes, of course. It, I, I don't know how you're not Team Stannis. If you're not, you're just like, you're just coping with the fact that, you know, this guy is so single mindedly or so single minded on his approach, what he wants, and he'll do whatever it takes to get what he wants. One last question I want to hear. You know, I love to hear people's comments because uh, we're cultivating a pretty good crowd of people here. Uh, like-minded individuals on the Song of Ice oh, and Fire yeah. side. Wink, wink. Do we think Stannis is on the spectrum at all? Just based off of his human interactions and how like um, duty-bound he seems, that maybe he's not fully autistic or like has like, Asperger's or something, but he's just so... People just always claim he's so unpersonable. Like He doesn't bring his wife to court with him. He's just like, no, she stays there. I'm, I'm working on stuff here. Like I don't need her. Or is that just like He's I, business I don't know. oriented? Business <laughs> okay. oriented. Okay, good. I, not that he can't I mean, be he on could, the he spectrum. Could be, he could be on the spectrum, I guess. That doesn't really change much, but uh, I'd still say probably not. They talked about how like uh, or George R. R. Martin, whatever the books I should say, uh -huh. talk about how little love he got as a kid and how little attention he got. So that would True. probably mess you up a little bit socially. And like, if no one was giving you attention, you just kind of huddle to your own devices and like come up with your own fun or whatever. And if his mind just led him to strategy and like eventually duty. It's like, dude, that's, that's pretty fucking cool, if you ask me. So I would say, no, he's not on the spectrum. I'd say he's just, he has a legitimate holy mission, and it's real. He's willing to sacrifice whatever it takes. If you're not on Team Stan, I think your head's completely in the fucking clouds. Okay. The secret to success, really, is just kill your kid. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and smash that like button. Or not. We don't care. <laughs>